with uh, the first lesson that we have planned with our SimPlay software, which is part of our transformational geometry unit. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at rotations, reflections, and translations. To get us started, what we like to do uh, is we like to do a little bit of a physical warm-up and show some of these concepts with our body and in pairs and so forth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start that and guide you through that and see how that goes. So the first thing we're going to do is just stretch up because it's really important to, um, for the kids to sort of start to warm up while we're doing this. So just stretching up, and I like to call this tall and narrow, which will come into play a bit later. And uh, then we just drop down, let yourself drop down and uh, shake there and just loosen up a little bit, slowly rolling up. So now we're feeling a little bit more in our bodies. And in order to move our, uh, warm up our shoulders a little bit and our arms, just going to have you raise your arms to your shoulders as much as you can. And drop that. Do that again with a good breath. Raising that up to your shoulders, to your ears, and then drop it again. Okay, now we're going to look at rotations very quickly, and that's basically moving an object around an axis point and maintaining its congruence, okay? So we're going to use our arm, very easy to do that. I'm going to set my uh, right foot forward, and I'm just going to take my arm and I'm going to swing it in a circle. So right away we can ask the kids about uh, the term vertical. This is a vertical circle, it's going up and down. And also I'm doing a 360 degree rotation or a full circle, and there's an axis point. My shoulder is the center of rotation. So they can see that that's how you do the rotation. I'll just change directions here. So basically that's a vertical rotation. Okay, so now we're just going to do a horizontal rotation. The kids are going to need to use the terms vertical and horizontal. So now we're going to move our arm here. That's a horizontal circle. And the center of rotation is the same. It's still my shoulder, although from a different angle. And right here we're doing a full circle. So a simple, very simple way to describe rotation. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about, or I want to um, help understand, is reflection. Now, generally speaking, we will get the kids to work in pairs. It's great if the kids are in a circle already. Easiest way to do this is either, for me, sometimes walk around A and a B, A and a B, A and a B. That kind of seems to help with organization for the kids. If that's, uh, if you find that your kids will pair up easily, you just say turn your, to your partner to your right, and um, they'll have a partner there. Before I do that, I usually take them through one more stretch, which is we Stretch our arms up, and then we gently roll down. So we're all rolled down. Keep your knees bent. You're nice and loose there. And I tap my fingers to the left. Take a nice deep breath there. And you'll feel the stretch on that side of your body. Walk your fingers to the center. And then again, walk your fingers to the right. So you're stretching the other side. And we're starting to understand the concepts of right and left, which are helpful when we're describing things. Now, I get the kids to roll up slowly, and at this point I say, find your partner. I'm going to be A. John, do you mind being B? I'll be B. Okay. So, I get the kids to do the same thing again, so we're going to go over slowly, bending down, bend your knees and let yourself go over to the side. And then if John taps his fingers to the right and I tap my fingers to the left, we're creating a reflection of each other. So let's bring our, our fingers back to the center and roll up one more time. And the other thing that we want to talk about is that something's happening in the middle of the two of us. So I usually ask the kids what that is. And uh, depending on whether or not we've done any work with them before, they might already understand that this is the mirror or the center of reflection. So if we go down again, let's just show that one more time. So we're each going to go to opposite sides. And then the kids can actually visually see how they're reflecting each other. And let's go back to the center and roll up. Now, I usually ask them, so if I'm A and John's B, I'll say, now I'd like you to turn and face each other. And now the center or your mirror reflection is happening between the two of you. So if you uh, want to make up a sort of movement yourself, have A make up a movement, which I'll do now, and then B can reflect that movement. Okay, so I'm going to do this. Good job. He needs to turn his head, but now we have a center of reflection. Okay, now, now we'll switch partners, and now the other uh, B can make a reflection for A. Okay. Yeah. 
So that's basically how we, we uh, demonstrate reflection. Thanks, John, for your help. Um, what I can usually, uh, what we can develop that into with the kids also, is they can get into groups of three or four, and maybe a larger group will reflect back what the other group is doing. It depends on how uh, how far you want to take that exercise. So right now we're going to talk about translations. A translation is when you move an object in a certain direction and you maintain its congruence. So I will use myself as the object in this example, and I'm going to move myself to my right by three paces. Easy enough, right? Here we go. One, two, three. And there you have it, it's as easy as that. Let's try another one. So this time I'm gonna go two paces to the left and backwards one step. Okay, ready? Here we go. One, two, and then backwards. Now you can have some groups of kids try this out and see how they do with it. 